Hello there. Hello there on Instagram. It's so good to see you, my lovelies. Hey there, my gorgeous peeps on Facebook. I'm Donna Hoffman. They call me the interior design advocate. Ah, there you are. I'm Donna Hoffman. <laughs> welcome, welcome. They call me the interior design advocate because I advocate on behalf of design lovers everywhere. Whether you're a professional design lover, oh, do we have you covered? We've got something gorgeous coming for you in January. An amazing program just for interior designers to create rocking design businesses. And if you're a design lover working on your own home, oh, we have you covered as well with our amazing online courses. As I said a second ago, I'm Donna Hoffman. I run a luxury interior design company here in the Philadelphia region of the United States. I have an amazing team. I am thrilled and grateful and blessed in them to include Katie here to, to, to my left. Um, I always say whatever I did in whatever former life to have deserved the team that I have now. I'm so glad I did it. I would do it again. And then when I'm not running this wonderful uh, luxury design company, I am a coach. I am an online design coach. I coach designers in how to really create the business of their dreams and the life of their dreams as business owners, as well as teaching design lovers working on your own home. You're not hiring designers. You're doing it yourself. That's what you want to do. And I show you how to get results that you will love, uh, no matter your budget, no matter your design style. And every Tuesday at 4 p.m., we like to put a pin in it, whatever it is we're working on at the design studio. And I come out here and I teach a lesson on something. Sometimes it's more for design lovers. Sometimes it's more for design professionals. And I do think that it's nice for design lovers to see what design professionals are talking about. I do. Because in case you are going to hire a designer, it's good to know what's going on in the trenches. And if you love design, it's good to see it from all angles anyway. So today, for the design lover out there, we're talking about something that I get a lot of questions on, and it's about kitchens, specifically kitchen cabinetry. So what, what do you need to know if you are purchasing kitchen cabinetry? Whether you're replacing what you already have or whether you're starting a project from scratch. Well, first and foremost, if you don't already know this, you need to know that the biggest nut in your kitchen, the biggest financial spend or commitment is on the kitchen cabinetry. Wood is expensive. Wood cabinetry, to make it, to build it, it's expensive. It's expensive to transport. Are you painting it? Are you staining it? There's a lot of workmanship and craftsmen that have to touch this thing. Then it comes to your place of, of, of residence, and then it has to all be put together and assembled. And it's just, it's a lot of hands. There's a lot of moving parts. And that is definitely where the greatest expense is. So what I'd like to do in today's Instagram Live, Facebook Live, I'd like to share with you what it is you need to know that drives the cost of your cabinetry up. So before we go directly to that, let's say this. I mean, you know that you have got to nail down the function first of your cabinetry to make sure that your layout is as you need it to be. So if you are replacing in an existing kitchen, don't assume that just because your pots were here or your dishes were there, that that's the ideal placement for them. I want you to really think first about function. How do you like to use your kitchen? And is your kitchen currently set up if you're redoing an existing kitchen? Is, is it currently set up so that it's giving you the optimal cooking experience, uh, cleanup experience, entertaining experience? If you're a baker, a baking experience, do you like to cook with other people? Do you like to bake with other people? So you want to look at how your current space is functioning and what you can do to improve it if you're redoing where you are. And make sure when you're working with your design professional that you're making sure that the new layout of the kitchen will respect the best use possible of your space, but also how you want to use it. Um, also, I think it's a great time if you're redoing a kitchen to make a very clean list of what your storage needs are. Where is your current kitchen failing? What would you like to see added? Make a column for wants and then a column for needs, right? So you, you're kind of keeping your, your wits about you on all of that. So all of the functional side of, of kitchen design, my gosh, guys, we could do an entire workshop just on kitchen design, many workshops on it. And as you know, if you spent any time with me, these Insta Lives and Facebook Lives, these are, it's like you've stopped into my office, which is going to be getting a huge redo, by the way, but I'll tell you about that in a couple months. Um, it's like you stopped here into my studio office and we're just chatting about a design topic on your brain. If you want something that's a very visual lesson, then you should check out my online courses, which are very visual. 
And I'm giving you that as a little preamble now to tell you that I'm going to be talking about something a little in a little bit. You're going to say, wait, what does that look like? And you're going to need to Google it. Okay. So get the function down first. Make sure you're real clear on what's working from an activity standpoint and what you need to expand upon. And if you're moving to a new residence or building from scratch, I still do that same evaluation. What's happening in my kitchen now? What am I missing going forward? Or what do I want to see going forward rather? What have I been missing? But let's talk about the costs with your kitchen cabinetry. What drives that cabinet cost up, 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 up? So before you know it, you're well beyond your budget. Well, let's go first for the guts. The guts inside the cabinetry. Things like um, soft close drawers. That's, that's, that's something that when a drawer closes, you start to close it and then it closes the rest of the way on, on its own. That's like more of the internal guts, the mechanisms within. Anything that you do that's a built-in. So built-in, you know, slots for your your utensils. That cha-ching starts to add up, believe it or not. Roll-out drawers. Oh, yes. Those start to add cost quite a bit. It's more wood. It's more mechanism. There are these rolling mechanisms. Uh, stand mixers. Love my stand mixer. And I used to love when my kids were younger. I'd have baking gatherings. You know, other moms would come in with their kids or I'd have nieces and nephews over and so on and so forth. And we'd all be cooking and baking together. So it was great to have that stand mixer. I could put the kids over in one area while the adults were doing something else in different stations and such. So all of those internal pieces definitely start to add up. So just be careful, wants versus needs. I happen to be a big proponent of pull-out drawer um, shelves because I think it stops wasted space, especially if you're in a smaller kitchen. Really in any kitchen, who wants wasted space? They're great inside of pantries as well, so you don't have that dead space at the very back corners. So I'm telling you what drives your costs up while I'm, while I'm telling you some of these things are pretty nice to have. So we talked about the guts, the pullouts, and the things that are inside the drawers, inside the cabinets. We talked about things like the soft closed drawers. Something else that has to do, it's partially aesthetic, it's partially the guts of lighting. The lighting will drive things up. Do not skimp on your under cabinet lighting. Sometimes people do that. I'd rather see you eliminate something else and not eliminate that lighting. That under cabinet lighting Give me a wave, give me a hello if you agree with this. It is make or break in a kitchen. It's your work light, it's part of your task light, but it's also the freshness and brightness in a kitchen. And without it, kitchens get really, really dim and dingy. So give me a hearts or a, a wave if, if you agree with me on that one, or if you've ever observed a kitchen that didn't have under cabinet lighting, and, and that's just something that people live to regret after that as well. I'm getting hearts on that one. Um, Another thing that will drive up cost, it may be more of a want than a need, but lighting inside a glass cabinet. Oh, it's so pretty. You know, it's Christmas time. You're doing an open house. It's Thanksgiving. You have the whole family over and, it, and it's just going on and on. And you started at three or four and now it's, you know, eight o'clock and people are like, hey, what's, what else is for dessert? It's so nice as you're, you know, going through your party in the evening to just have those lit cabinets on it. It's just such a brightening and a freshening um, for an evening event or for a cold winter night, an autumnal something. So adds cost, but oh, is it delish to have? It really is. So now let's talk about the flourishes artistically or aesthetically that really start to drive up your cabinetry costs as well. So glass, I already mentioned that. You bet. Glass is expensive. Your windows in your residence are expensive. Glass is expensive. So glass in your cabinets are expensive. So here's the thing I'd say. If you feel like you wish you had more window in your kitchen, more light in your kitchen, I'd say, yeah, see if you can work in at least one pair of glass cabineted doors. The thing though to know, you gotta really think ahead of time, what am I gonna be putting in those? And am I gonna like the way it looks? Am I going to be storing my barware in there and it'll be more glass and prettiness? Or do I really not know what I'm gonna put in there? Now I have to kind of, you know, design you know, design and accessorize it. So just be be aware, be cognizant of what you're doing there. Something else that um, definitely adds cost, I don't have a picture to show you. Sorry, my lovelies. But I'm doing, I think I'm going to do it in my new office, um, design office. And I'm definitely doing it in a tricked out kitchen we're working on right now in the Princeton, New Jersey region. You can do these wonderful wire mesh overlays 
on a cabinet door. Ah, oh, they are so good. Picture this. Now, you might have seen like chicken wire before, right, in, in, a, in a kitchen cabinet. So you can either do that wire mesh. Tight, it's a much tighter mesh than, a, than a, a classic chicken wire or much more open. Or it can be rippled. They're doing some really cool meshes right now. You can either do that as the insert inside a, a paneled door of a cabinet. You can do it on top of the wood. Oh, I'm driving up your cost. So now you've got this wood cabinet, so it's closed. You don't see what's behind there. But then you've got this wonderful mesh eye candy on top of it. Oh, so, so good. Well, guess what? You can put in a mesh overlay on top of a glass cabinet. Yes, you can. So let's go through this. A panel door can either be solid or you can pull out that center panel and put in a glass piece. And now you have a glass cabinet. You could take that glass cabinet, keep that glass, put the um, a mesh over top of it. Do mesh alone or mesh on top of glass. So the more I layer in these elements, do you hear, do you hear that cha-ching, cha-ching sound? That's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm driving that cost up at the look. Mm, so good. You know what else you can do in kitchen cabinets? Not everywhere, but in the right places. You can do a mirrored insert. Yes, you can do like an antique mirror and then do a pretty crosshatch mullion in the cabinet color, in the cabinet wood over the top of it. Yes, I know you would like to see pictures, but guys, I've been running around from appointment to appointment. I've had, we were, we were in an art gallery earlier. I've had internal, internal meetings with my team. So again, these are just discussion points uh, for you. So if you hear me say something and you're thinking, what the heck does that look like, Donna? Google is your friend and Google it. So just Google kitchens with wire mesh um, cabinetry inserts, kitchens with, um, you know, with uh, antique glass cabinet accents. Just take a look out there. See what, see what Google will bring up for you. Um, and this next one, you're going to kill me because you're definitely going to need a picture because describing it, it's like I'm going to be Marcel Marceau, the pantomimer, and I can't do that. But the thing that will definitely add cost is whether or not you do a door and open this and write this down, whether you do an inset door, I-N-S-E-T, an inset door, or a full frame overlay. I'll say that again. Full frame overlay or an inset door. Full frame overlay doors are less expensive than an inset cabinet door. With a an inset door, the door literally sets into the cabinet frame and it looks very bespoke. It looks very high end. It looks very elegant. It's, it's very beautiful. There is a downside because you do lose a little bit of room inside your drawer bases. So I'll take my word for that. Too complicated for me to show you without showing you the physical on it. With full frame overlay, the door itself covers in the frame entirely. Alrighty. So you don't have rails that are that are, are separating your doors. If I go any further into this topic without visuals, you're gonna start throwing things at the screen. So I'm gonna stop. So just Google it. What's the difference between an inset door? Pictures showing a difference between an inset cabinet door and a full frame overlay. Let's take a look. Write this down. Full frame overlay generally is lower cost than an inset cabinet door. Alrighty. What some people do to defray those costs if they love the look of those inset doors, they'll just do inset doors above the countertop and below the countertop. They will do um, full frame overlay. So it's just it's a choice. And then just a couple of other things to know with kitchen cabinet costs. I hope this is helpful. I hope this is making sense for you and exciting some new thinking too. Um, you know, when you, when you do a painted cabinet, it can be lower cost than doing a stained cabinet. And lucky for you, the white kitchen still has a lot of steam behind it, and as does painted cabinetry. So that generally, back when the white cabinet and the painted cabinet was just starting to come in and most people were still doing some sort of staining, stained was generally higher cost. And here's the last thing I'll say to you, uh, as I have an eyelash still bugging me. Um, I think it's easier to land a white kitchen at a lower cost because you can fake, you can fake that painted, that paint grade wood. So I think you can, you can land a white kitchen for a high ticket too. Don't, don't get me wrong here. But I think that the painted cabinet is a kind of a good, um, a good sign or a good, a good opportunity for design lovers who are working on a budget. Painted cabinets tend to come in lower cost 
as compared to something quite equal in quality in a stain. All right. So will any one of these changes be, you know, bank breaking? No. But when you start adding a little overage here, a little bit here, a little bit there, and you just keep another 750, another 1800, another 1000, another 500, another, another 700, oh, that inserts another 600, it all starts to add up. So keep your wits about you. Wants versus needs. Okay. So if you have a question about kitchen cabinetry that you're working on now, please, I'm happy, or you're going to be working, going to be working on, I'm happy to take your question while I'm here live. And while you're putting in your questions, I just want to let you know, if you missed any portion of this, you can find any of our videos as well as videos that we cut that are just teaching lessons that are very visual. They're not Facebook lives or Insta lives. You can find us on YouTube as the interior design advocate on YouTube. And also if you are not already following us on, you guys are on our teaching uh, Instagram feed, that's at decorating.genius. That's at decorating.genius. And if anybody out there is not following me and my team here at our luxury design company, that's at IDH designs. That's at IDH Designs. There it is. So let me see who's out there, what mischief everybody's getting into, what's happening. Okay, Meredith is saying hi from South Carolina. Hi, I'm Meredith. How are you? Beverly is saying good afternoon, Donna. And Miriam is watching from California saying hi to everybody. Lucia is so happy that she's catching this live. She's here from Tennessee. Hey, Lucia. Beverly is saying the kitchens are expensive. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. And they are more expensive, Miriam is saying, than living in dining rooms. That is so true. It's all that wood, like we were just saying. More hellos from Apex, North Carolina. Shannon Tope is giving me an amen on something. I don't know what it's to, but I'll just say thank you and amen back to you. We'll take all amens and blessings. Anybody ever wants to throw this way. Um, Miriam is saying she definitely agrees with lighting underneath the cabinet. Um, Natalie is saying, yes, under cabinet lighting is a definite. My hubby is an electrician. He puts it in all the time. Yes, yes, and yes. Jennifer McCann is also thumbs up in under cabinet lighting. Good. So I'm preaching to the choir and under cabinet lighting. Okay. Angela is saying it's a yes as well. Um, okay. So, okay. So Miriam is saying, I don't want glass because people can see what's see the inside. That is, I get it. You know, that's why people don't do glass, uh, in their cabinets, but you could do, like I said, you could do antique mirror with a little bit of a, of a cabinet mullion, a cross hatch or a gothic mullion. Those are the mullions that go like this, and kind of meet in the center, really pretty. Okay, I'm getting on Instagram, Patsy Villiers is saying yes under cabinet lighting. Okay, T Hobbs 68 on Insta saying, we remodeled our kitchen a few years ago. We chose to resurface our cabinet doors into a shaker style. They look amazing. Yes, you can definitely do so much with refinishing and refacing your cabinetry. I really didn't go into that today, not because I'm not a proponent of it. We're, we may do that um, for a project we're looking at um, if, if we join the project. I think it's a great idea. I would do it in my own kitchen because I have a lot of cabinets and they, we spent a lot on them and I could easily just recolor them. Today I wanted to talk to you about what happens if you're buying new cabinets because I feel like we haven't really covered that topic. But I agree with you, T Hob 68. Good job on that one. And then Joan Sachs, Joan Zach 48, 418 is saying hardware is also very important. I did glass poles in my kitchen. Exclamation point. Yes, I do not disagree with you. Hardware is the jewelry of the kitchen. I really like to um, add glass in certain kitchens as well. On my own, I did uh, glass at all the doors and all the all the the upper the upper row of doors below, below cabinet below countertop, and then everything else has uh, a metal pole. I do think you can mix glass in very nicely in a lot of different styles, and there's so much coming out. Great acrylic poles, ah, oh, sexy, fabulous, good looking you know, things. So there it is. Um, okay. So, uh, Debbie is counseling that most furniture has inset cabinets. That is correct. So although lower cost furniture does not have inset cabinets, um, Debbie, so I would, would want everybody to just Google inset cabinet door versus, um, overlay, full overlay, full overlay. Sandra's saying, I wish I'd known some of this prior to my kitchen renovation overall, though I'm happy with the end result. Sandra, I hear that a lot. People find us too late after their project, but at least you now know for your next project. 
Angela is saying, typically when you order a glass cabinet, you will receive the wood door as well. Yes. This is wonderful if your lifestyle changes and you need to hide your items. True that. Yes. Lori is saying, I'm going to be doing a new build, and I have noticed that more and more I'm seeing large pull-out drawers for pots and pans and also for dishes. Is this trendy or something that will stay? Lori, I think it really has to do with um, really what makes you comfortable in terms of working your space, what maximizes your space as well. You okay over there? Should I do like a Heimlich thing? You good? You want some of my water? You a tickle? You want some of my coffee? I'm okay. All right. Well, I'm trying to think what else I can send over to Katie. Um, no, don't worry about it. I just want to make sure you're okay. Yeah. All righty. Um, so uh, listen, I I I do pots in cabinets. I do pot, I do a lot of pots and drawers. A lot of them. I just think it's it's more convenient to see down into it rather than having to bend to see what was happening with your pots. So I wouldn't be afraid of that uh, feature at all, Lori. Um, I, I would not be worried about the, the guts becoming trendy. If anything, I think that what cabinet makers and, and, and cabinet houses are doing better and better is increasing the efficiency. Even like somehow some of the mini Susans and lazy Susans are pulling out rather than just spinning. I, I think there's a lot of good innovation happening there. Alrighty, so Beverly's saying, such good information, Donna. Glad I tuned in from work. Me too, Beverly. I just hope you don't get in trouble from work. I'll write your boss a note if you need, if you get in trouble. Uh, dear boss, please excuse. Please excuse Beverly. Um, okay, Instagram is saying, what are the most recent cabinet color trends from Pam? Okie dokie, Pam. So I could swear we did something on this. So you may want to go to our YouTube channel and take a look at what we talked about with kitchen trends. Didn't we do something pretty recently on this? Sometime in my yeah. lifetime, I think so. So you may want to look at that. But in the meantime, happy to answer you. So listen, the white kitchen still has quite a bit of life. Although I do think people are reinventing the white kitchen. What we see happening is the white is dirtying down. It's like a little a little has a little bit of a gray undertone it's not just that builder white 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 um we are still seeing gray cabinets but it's not the only it's not the first thing clients are asking for the first thing that we're seeing at, at show houses uh, or coming down the pike in terms of what the industry correspondence is but gray is still holding itself it's just not being used everywhere as it was four years ago three years ago five years ago. So I, if you're going to, if you are in love with gray still, I might throw it on the island and not on my perimeter. Okay. I will tell you that stained cabinetry is making a comeback as well as mixed mixing painting with, um, with wood. That's not a comeback, but that trend is gaining steam. So particularly in some warmer climates, beachy climates, California, Texas, more modern um, orientations as well. We're seeing this wonderful white oak, really pretty, simple slab doors, um, no hardware or very modern hardware, but a lot, a lot with no hardware. Combining that with a white cabinetry or with a, a painted cabinetry. I still think that a white cabinetry combined with, let's say, an island in a black, beautiful, or a black, rich, a very rich colored black color, um, or in a blue, or in a of green. I think those are just really delicious, and, and those work as well, Pam. When we are seeing stained cabinetry, it's either that light, you know, white oak, or it's a deeper ebony stain. What we're not seeing are um, the yellowy, you know, uh, to, to finish uh, with glazes. We're not seeing like the cherry cabinet, uh, that mid honey oak cap. We're not seeing that really, you know, that's kind of moved aside. So hopefully Pam, I've answered you. If not, babes, send in a follow-up question. Happy to answer you on that. Sandra is so, Elaine, Elena is saying hi from Nashville. Oh, Elena, I'm so anxious to get to Nashville. Here's a great town. Um, Sandra is saying, instead of using the traditional backsplash, I used a grass cloth over a four inch splash that was installed. Okay. Well, I am not thrilled about a grass cloth in a high watery environment, Sandra. So I'm hoping that you did a vinyl that looks like a grass cloth, but is not actually a grass product. So there it is. Noelle saying, what about refacing cabinets? Love it. Great. I think it's a big bang for the buck move and totally believe in it. Um, provided that you like your cabinet layout, that you like 
you know, that your your cabinets go high enough high enough up for you. And I'll tell you what, depending upon what you want to spend, I've done projects where I have recolored a cabinet, had a bigger crown built up on that cabinet and had that recolored, had that, you know, painted to whatever we were coloring to. I have taken slab doors that were super modern for a client who was not modern and we added a little bit of a millwork detailing so it looked more traditional for her. So there's a lot you can do as long as you're willing to pay for it. But yes, I think refacing is a great way to go. Okay, last two questions, guys, because I have more work to do here at the studio. Okay, so... Um, Sandra's saying, I didn't, I didn't get under cabinet lighting, but I am trying to come up with another creative way to get the effect. Sandra, everybody says that they regret not doing that under cabinet, uh, under cabinet lighting. I'd call in an electrician and see how much it would cost to retrofit you for some under cab lighting. It just broadcasts such a great light all the way across your countertops, um, and, and it eliminates all that shadowing that you get by not having that. Shannon Tope is saying, when attacking a kitchen reno, where are the best places to save costs in buying new cabinetry? Okay, Shannon, I want you to go back and rewatch this if you missed any piece of this. Sounds like you might have because I kind of layered this lesson in this will add cost and so will this and so will this and so will this. Go back and rewatch it, but write this down. Look at overlay doors instead of inset doors. Write that down, Shannon. Overlay versus inset. Watch how many, you know, how much built-in moving parts I'm putting in, like uh, pull-out shelves and, you know, uh, internal accessories inside my cabinets and inside my drawers. That adds cost as well. Watch glass doors as well. Um, that should help you uh, quite a bit. But go back and rewatch this. If you missed any portion of it, my lovely Shannon Tope, go to YouTube and find us, okay, the Interior Design Advocate. This, this will be posted. I think Steve posts this, what, the day after? Something like that. By tomorrow, this should be, sometime tomorrow, this should be posted uh, if you missed it. And I think it'll rerun on our Instagram feed. Yeah. And, you, it, comes up on Facebook and it comes up on Facebook immediately. So what am I saying? I'm complicating this. Lori Preach is saying, I have a white kitchen with glass doors in the cabinets above the wine fridge and store glasses and crystal there. How can I jazz it up? Should I paint the back of the cabinet Ooh, or install wallpaper? Lori Go, girlfriend, go. Yeah, either one of those I think would give you the entire jazziness that you need. That's I think that's brilliant. I love it, and that's what I would do as a designer. Um, the other thing you can do, now it's too late, you're already installed. Never mind. If you want to blow some money in a, in a kitchen, you want to know what looks great. When you take a tiled backsplash up all the way behind a glass cabinet, so good. It's more expensive, believe it or not. They have to leave the back of the cabinet off and it's a whole thing and you get complaints from people, but it looks killer good. Jennifer is saying, is quartz still a countertop favorite? You mean like compressed quartz and stuff? Yeah, it is. Um, yeah, look, builders are still putting in a lot of granite in, in you know, builder grades. <laughs> used to be that granite was the upgrade, upcharge, right? Now it's, it's a standard in many homes in many neighborhoods it's, it's an expected material so it's gotten to the point where granite per square foot granite has different grades right grade five six seven eight nine ten eleven but it gets to a point where a lower grade granite can be far lower cost installed than a quartzite product like a cam like a, a cambria or something like that the, the brilliant thing about the, the, the quartzite, the compressed quartz, the compressed stone cabinets is that you can really control what your repeat is. So if you want something whisper quiet, you have it. If you want something with a little bit of movement, you have it. You can control the color because with this natural stone, it's the minerals that are making up the mineral content that makes up the color that you get, right? So um, I'm very, I love the, the quartz countertops that are out there now and some of them are showing these stunning repeats these big sweeping moments um but, but none of them are really trying to look like that speckled um countertop right which i still have in my kitchen quite frankly granite and when we redo our kitchen i'm definitely going to recolor my cabinets new backsplash and new countertops and there it is all right I know I said two more questions, but these questions are so damn good. I just can't pull myself away. Here we go. From Angela. 
on Instagram. Gold hardware is trending, but what color sink do you do with it? Silver. Do a, do a stainless. No problem. You're not going to... You, you don't want every single metal in the kitchen to be the same. You could do a gold sink if you wanted to be like, ah, oh, crazy pants. Or you could do a white farmhouse sink for sure. But I have no problem with a stain, stainless steel and, and even silver plumbing fixtures and doing gold hardware. Fabulous. So don't worry about that, Angela. I say go for it. And look at look at what look at some um look at some inspo pictures and see how people are mixing metals. Um oh good grief, I'm getting a spam call. Do you guys get a gajillion of these stupid spam calls on your phone? Drives me crazy. Alrighty. Okay, I really truly have to wrap this baby up. Get Katie on her way and I've got to get moving too. Um I'm going to see if there's anybody who hasn't asked a question. Elena's loving this information. Good. Barb loved my online course. Great. Oh, speaking of which, if you want help making a great room happen, including a great kitchen, like killer great, check out my Decorating Genius, Seven Simple Steps to Great Rooms. It is a fantastic online course. Women love it because it works. People love the way I teach design. I make it very accessible, very logical, very linear, because to me, excellent design actually is more logical than math. So I teach it in a way that I make it really accessible. Um, so check out uh, the link that we posted for you in our description. And for you guys, just link in, um, link in bio, I guess, link in bio. Yep, there it is. Carolyn is saying, do people ever add more cabinets above existing cabinets to the ceiling to make it more custom? Yes. Yes, you, you all all of the above. Carolyn, you can have a contractor, a good one, come in, remove your upper cabinets, move them around, build some new to match, build a bigger headpiece uh, crown to make them look taller. Um, I, I have done things where we've kept some of the perimeter cabinetry, added more to redo where the appliances were laying out, and build up the crown. There's so much you can do. It starts to add up. But you do a cost comparison to say, hey, would it be more costly to replace? And chances are replacing it all will be more costly. But yes, there's a lot you can do. You just need a great a great design team behind you, a great kitchen designer behind you doing all this, okay? Um, Carolyn is saying, thoughts on thermofoil. I don't know. Do you know what thermofoil is? No Stumped me. Don't know what thermofoil is. Sorry, Carol. I wish I could help you there. Um, Shannon, you um, have, uh, you have very high vaulted ceilings. How can I, how high can I take my upper cabinets? Uh, not above normal reaching height. I wouldn't go anything above as if you had like a 12 foot ceiling or 10 foot ceiling. You're not going to go up to your vault there. So Lori's saying thanks a bunch. And, um, Peggy's saying my cabinets are still, are uh, still a honey blonde or are, 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 are honey blonde is honey blonde still out of date? Um, yeah, it's not the thing people are asking for right now. Uh, I'll have to be honest with you there. And then people are saying hello and goodbye and thank you so much. All right, so I think we got to everybody. All right, listen, lovelies, it was great, great being here with you. Next week, we've got a great topic. We are leaning into our design pros, our design professionals. We're going to talk about the difference between marketing versus networking for a really successful design biz. The difference between marketing versus networking for a super successful design biz. So I will see you next week, 4 p.m. Eastern. Can't wait. Have a great week, lovelies, and see you next week. Bye-bye now. Hi, this is Donna. Thanks so much for watching. And if you like this video, please hit the like button and comment below so I know what you think. And don't forget to subscribe to the Interior Design Advocates channel so you don't miss any of our great content.